You're watching Leafs Morning Tape with host Nick Alberga and former NHLer Jay Rosehill. The show starts now. I won't lie, Rosie. I was going to start today's show by trying to get you on something April Fool's, but A, I'm not in the mood for it. B, I think I, I hate this day. It's funny. I texted one of my buddies. Uh, it's his birthday on April Fool's. I'm like, I only wonder what you dealt with for the last 35 years. I'm just not a big fan of April Fool's. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if you would have got me or not. I might. I kind of knew it was April 1st, but uh, depending on what the joke was, if you said Austin Matthews got traded, I'd be like, cool, man. Good story. <laughs> no, I think but I yeah. was going to roll with I was going to roll with something Mitch Marner related because I know that makes you trigger a bit. You start to tense up a bit. So I was going to go with it's that. Great. And then I won't lie. I woke up and there was an article on the LeafsNation.com that was a clear April Fool's where it was like, Mitch Marner is going to play D for the rest of the season. And I'm like, I just can't do this to Rosie, a guy who is a former national leaguer, dropped the gloves in the league to throw a joke like that at him. He'd be like, get the fuck off my set. So I didn't do it. I wouldn't have been heartbroken, but yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of when I have been gotten by April Fool's. Sometimes there's good ones and it's unreal, but other times when you try to do it and it doesn't go off because it's like, yeah, it's April Fool's, then it kind of, you kind of end up looking like a dickhead. So, eh, you know, it's not a joke. Um, So obviously it was a long weekend. Good Friday, decided to go out. I walk into my, one of my favorite bars on King Street West, two cats. And who do I run into? Producer Vic. And what a reunion it was. Uh, in fact, it, it, it was full circle because I was out with producer Vic maybe, what, three years ago? And he met the love of his life at this establishment, Two Cats. And it was funny. We were all together again. But the problem was we took a shit ton of shots. And I am kid you not, I still feel hungover like two days later. Like Saturday was the most miserable I felt since I started working with you. <laughs> welcome to your late 30s is that what you're at is that where you're at no where are you no, I, how old are you give me Early more credit 30. i'm turning 35 in august bud shit yeah we had a little rendezvous last yesterday we had brunch and my wife and all had 15 people and some kids over and brunch continued until about nine o'clock at night so i'm not in that boat but i was damn close so i'm good i'm good i'm feeling good at oh. this uh at, at this this episode and those boozy brunches will get you as well so again thank you to tuning for tuning in this is least morning take the monday edition april 1st new month we love that nick alberga and jay rosel presented by botano lots to talk about and uh the start of a new month and again the other thing that got me on this monday we still have 20 days until the stanley cup playoffs man like it just seems like we're waiting for nothing what is there one playoff spot to be determined in the eastern conference yeah, it's kind of that way, you're, and it changes all the time. Like last show, I think we were talking about like the wild card and how possible it looks and this and that, and now it kind of looks like that's not as likely, and it looks like Florida, but if we catch them, we'll just kind of flip-flop with home ice. It's not as exciting right now, but yeah, I don't know. And we talk about this one versus eight compared to the wild card, what's better, what's not. I don't know, there's different opinions, but I do think that at this point in the year it it leaves a lot to be desired you know there's not much to play for we're talking about resting guys and load managing and it's kind of like 20 days dude that's three weeks of of a whole lot of nothing I mean things do change and maybe some excitement will come but yeah it's kind of a blah time of year it is uh but I will say the one thing that got me out of my stupor on Saturday and specifically my my nasty day-long hangover was poppy aka tone number 60 for austin matthews uh probably the best home crowd this team has had this season but the game actually took place in buffalo i love that quote a bunch of the quotes coming out of that game namely from max domi on social media what an electric atmosphere man that was so cool to have the whole crowd behind him to score number 60 i thought that was great yeah that was wild like even you know the kids in my house were like whoa it's loud there like it's it's noticeable on tv which sometimes the tv doesn't pick up you know the electricity of a crowd or the atmosphere and in buffalo it did man they were going nuts and i mean i think that's what you get when you get truly passionate fans who have followed this organization for as long as they have don't get to go to a lot of games at scotia scotia bank arena and they get to go down the highway and go to a game in Buffalo and see their favorite team and everyone else is doing the same thing. And you like outrun an entire organization's fan base in their own barn 
I just, I don't think you can find a lot of comparables where other organizations can do that. Like name another one in the league where that could possibly happen. Does not happen. I'm trying to think about other sports. I can't think of it. You get the Leafs fans down in Boston. That was, they, they literally, it wasn't just like, oh yeah, we really noticed our fans. They said, <laughs> Domi said it was the best crowd of the year and it's not even in their goddamn rink. It's crazy. Dude, it was like I was watching that game and my hair was like raising off my skin. Like it's such a cool feeling. I could only wonder what it feels like to be a player. And like that's all I ask for from Scotia Bank Arena. Rosie, you've played in some of the loudest barns in this league. Nashville comes to mind. Philadelphia. I mean, I know you weren't there for Vegas, but like fuck, just just make a bit of noise. Like I, I do truly feel, and I know home ice is not quite the same as it was maybe even 15 years ago. Just a bit of noise can go a long way. And getting the guys jack. Like, look at the way the the Leafs played. They they built off Samsonov over the weekend too. It wasn't their best outing, uh, but I thought they they were huge with execution in that game. And I just thought it was so cool to see the reaction to the crowd. The best part of that video, as we flash on your screen right there, was Bowen Byram doing like the Michael Jordan. He had no stick, and he's like, "Dude, I've I can't stop this fucking guy." And that's my feeling when I watch Austin Matthews. Like I was watching that game. You were too. It just felt like that goal was imminent. Like it was happening in Buffalo on Saturday and there was nothing anybody could do about it. Well, he was trying hard for it. Like <clears throat> there was what games before, like how many shot attempts he's tried. He's tried to get it going. And um, th that shift, he damn near had it before. And then it ended up on his stick and he buried it. But I mean, with that, it's crazy. Like you're talking about the atmosphere for the Leafs mm -hmm. and you're in Buffalo, man. It's not your rink. It's not your rink. And it's that loud and palpable on TV. And when he's selling, man, he was fired up. So I'm glad it didn't happen in Columbus or something like that. Uh, pretty cool. And I don't know. I'd like to know, like, if you actually had like a, a meter and gauging the noise, if, if it's just, like the acoustics in, in Scotiabank that don't translate to TV. Cause it does get loud in there. It does get electric. It is, it is a very cool atmosphere at times. And I just don't think it translates to TV very well. And I would argue that maybe it does a little bit more in Buffalo, but I mean, no quite, it doesn't matter how you spin it. That place was rocking. And I think the biggest thing is it's more blue collar people that don't go to sit in the platinum seats every single game. And they're very excited to see a game and they got a show and a shutout and a 60th and, Lots of reason for those real true fans who are willing to travel to watch the Leafs in, in person brought it and were excited and were fired up and they, they got a show. So it was a pretty cool night. They did. I, I thought it was awesome. Again, like the, the biggest comparable I can say is like the Stanley Cup playoffs a couple of years back. I was uh, fortunate enough to be in the building and like you couldn't hear yourself think. Uh, but other than that, it just reminded me of the Pat Quinn era where every playoff game, every Leaf game in general was just like really, really loud. And Obviously, the audio is a bit different in TV, but I've been to a bunch of games. I uh, haven't recently, as you know. I don't really go to many games anymore unless I can find a way there. Like, I just can't justify spending that much money, especially with this team when you never know if they're going to, you know, show up for a game against Anaheim or Arizona. Like, it just, it's, a, it's a big ask. It's a tall ask. And I'm a big guy with atmosphere, too, man. Like, I love going to games in Buffalo. I was trying to go on Saturday. Couldn't get my hands on, on tickets. Obviously, it was a hot ticket with Matthews hunting 60, but... It really, for the first time this season, gave me that feel like, hey, this could be a special season for this team. I know we say that every year in Leafs Nation, but like it had that moment, that feel like I thought it was so cool. Just the reaction, um, you know, Matthew striving off that, the team flooding in after he scores that goal. Like that was really, really cool stuff. And it was one of those pinch me moments, too, where like you don't realize that we're watching greatness, man. Like in 25 years wherever we are, we're going to be talking about Austin Matthews, the greatest Toronto Maple Leaf of all time. Like, I stand firm in that. He already is in that conversation. And he's going to be looked at as a, one of the best goal scorers ever, period, which I think is really cool, too. Yeah, more than likely. And, you know, to have multiple 60-goal seasons, you, you look at the guys that have played, and, I mean, you go – I mean, obviously, the Gretzky's and the Lemieux's and – you know, the OVs and, and you go through it and there's the Hulls and, and these different players and Solani and McGillney were doing it in the 90s and there's different eras where it's easier or more difficult to score. score. The goaltenders are different. The equipment's different. But over time, all those greats have played the game and only like, I think, nine guys have yep. had multiple 60-point seasons. Like, that's insane. That's, that's stupid company, man. And he's doing mm -hmm. it. It's not like... 
it's not he's doing he's not doing it with ease but it's certainly not like a flash in the pan thing like he's going to do this again he's yeah. young enough he's in his prime he's only getting more confidence he's just disgusting at scoring goals man and it's fun to watch and yeah it's nice that he got to do it with um with some flash it wasn't at home but it sure as well might have might as well have been so very yeah. cool and yeah you say this team could do it could be a special year it absolutely can be a special year and this team <clears throat> when they're click and i mean it's not just like austin scored ford and like it's like Bertuzzi's and Adomi's in on it like these guys on the back end are are making a difference our goaltenders are you know especially Sammy's story right now and Wool's very capable like if they just come together and if I'm just again it comes down to the playoffs like what's Marner gonna do what's Matthews gonna do what's Nylander gonna do are these guys gonna gonna be like switch hitting the shifts and like just coming in waves and just have all their shit together they could be deadly man and I'm just there's nothing we can do about it sitting at home and as fans, but hope and and pray and cross your fingers. But the potential is there for these guys. If they get their shit together at the right time and, and click, they can handle any team in the league. And I think they've got the backbone to do it now. I think they've got the physicality. I think they've got the goaltending, the defensemen, or, you know, they've got some short up guys that can, you know, if they play the right way, it's not there every single night. But if they can find it and come together, it's it could be one of those stories where it's like, look the hell out. The Toronto Maple Leafs have found their shit at the right time and everyone's come together. And if they can play some playoff hockey, it's just I'm really excited for this year. I'm not putting any predictions on. I'm not knocking them. I'm not building them up. I'm not doing anything. It's up to them. And I'm, I'm excited as hell. And I'm kind of sad that it's 20 days away. Yeah, shit, the way Elias Samson is playing right now, too, you get that feeling in between the pipes. And, uh, yeah, it's like excitement that are going to turn to nerves, I think, around, like, April 18th when you know the Stanley Cup playoffs start on that Saturday. But the next couple weeks will build up to the potential matchup, whether it's Florida tonight's opponent, uh, whether it's the Boston Bruins, the Rangers, the Carolina Hurricanes, looking forward to the next couple weeks of coverage. And uh, I want to give some major props as well to uh, Simone Benoit. We thought we are going to have Friday completely off. And, uh, fortunately, I think from the Benoit camp, we didn't. Because we had a extension of breakdown, and I invite you all to go out and check that out at the Leafs Nation 401. We responded, gave our thoughts on the Benoit extension from Friday, three years, 4.05 million. That's 1.35 on the AAV. We both love the contract extension, right? Yeah, I didn't see anyone that didn't. You know, <clears throat> I think I, I mentioned in that video, like Tree Living's giving certain guys, him, you know, the, the Bertuzzi's and Domi's, like these one year deals. And it's just so smart. It's like, they don't know if it's going to work out for them. The team doesn't know if it's going to work out for them. Here's a year. Come on in. See how it goes. See how you gel. See how you like the market. See how you like the atmosphere of the organization. See what it's like for you. See if you can perform in this market. And gives these guys these one-year deals. Here's a Benoit with not a lot of expectations on the guy's shoulders. No one was talking about him too heavily. But with what the Leafs needed on the back end, he's been a breath of fresh air. Like early on in the season, you're noticing that Benoit guy is banging some bodies out there and he's getting in the mix and he's clearing the puck and he's he's playing that defensive style you know physical you know defense first get the puck into capable hands type of defenseman and he just kept getting more and more noticeable and then all of a sudden people are just loving this Benoit guy and I, we've talked about it before do not agree with him being scratched by any stretch of the imagination that's the NHL it should be totally merit-based system and he has earned his spot in the lineup every single night he's what they've been needed and I think you know I don't think we're going to see much more of that I certainly hope we we won't but he's earned his spot and I think he's going to be effective in the playoffs I think he's going to be ready and hungry to provide what this city and organization has wanted for a long time and hats off to tree living for giving a guy you know a one-year deal it's a no no risk type of contract he comes in and proves himself all right here's your deal it doesn't break the bank it's not even going to be a blip on the radar as far as the salary cap and he's it's just a wicked signing. Everything about it is yeah. positive. Like, not one thing you can say is, oh, I don't know about this. Well, then what the hell are you wanting if you don't want Benoit for that kind of money? Yeah, it's a win-win, man. Because, again, if he continues to play the way he has throughout this season, then you have a steal in the 3-4 pairing. If not, he's still a 5-7 to seven guy, right? And paying a 1.35 mil with the salary cap going up, I think, again, it's just a win-win for both parties involved. At the Leafs Nation 401, where you can subscribe on YouTube, Leafs Morning Take, wherever you find your podcast. And, again, don't forget, the Leafs and the Panthers, again, maybe a potential playoff preview. Uh, make sure to tune in to Leafs Nation After Dark with Zach Phillips. That's coming up tonight as we look forward to this matchup with the Florida Panthers. 
I believe we have video on the screen right now, and this is not an April Fool's joke. Uh, Zach, known for his beard and uh, big trim job over the weekend, I guess. Like straight to the wood or what? I haven't seen it yet. I want to see. I don't know how long this video is, but maybe just a quick trim. Look at that. Wow. I hope Zach's watching right now. I want the the, the breakdown on this. This is breaking news. It's kind of like one of those chin beards going on always. Yeah. The wood. (laughs) Yeah. We'll have to check them out after this. Sometimes I'm if I'm not like scheduled to go on uh, the after show, the after game show, I'm I'll like be watching and, you know, you have a glass of wine and I'm like yelling at the TV or super pumped or jacked about something that happens. And I just want to like get on the horn and be like, I'm coming on tonight. So I think that's probably going to happen at some point in time where I just muscle my way into the show, which hopefully we have enough pull to do that. And you could do that. Uh, I think that's authentic. I, I think, I don't know about you, my, my biggest commentary or thoughts on something happens directly after it. And that's why yeah. we've uh, introduced the Leafs nation after dark again, check that out with Zach Phillips coming up tonight at the Leafs Nation 41 on YouTube. If you're watching right now and not subscribed, please help us out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leafs won't even take again wherever you find your podcast. Brought to you by DoorDash. It's time for the appetizer. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off the $10 in value and zero delivery fees in their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app. Enter code NATION25. That's code NATION25. All in uppercase, 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Offer valid in Canada. Subject to change. Terms apply. So we talked about Austin Matthews. We talked about the awesome crowd off the top there. Ilya Samsonov. I don't want to forget or bury that lead, that story, a 34 safe shutout, man. That guy was tremendous on Saturday night in Buffalo. Yeah, it's funny. There's a few stories coming out of there. Obviously, the crowd, Austin, 1,100 games for JT, and Sammy's shutout, man. Like, just a plethora of positivity, which... I tweeted something out at the end of the game. We can get to that. I kind of, I don't know if I feel bad for it, but I think it was taken uh, the wrong way in a way, but um, about the geo jumping in there and stuff. Oh like dude, no, I, I want to get to that. That again, I don't like, I, I have no issue with social media and like these different run social medias, but that wasn't a fight. I don't know what the fuck that was. I, I, I tweeted out. I don't know what I just watched dot, dot, dot. Cause I, I, to me, it was like a bunch of guys were like, we know we got to do something, but do we want to do something? And we got a 40-year-old defending this fucking team again. We'll get to that. I want to get to Samson off first, though. Yeah, we don't want to glaze over Samson off for the second time. No, it's just fucking... It's his crease. I tweeted that after the game. I'm like, it's... uh, this. These Leafs look sharp, man. They're they're not trying to scramble to find a whole bunch. There's not a lot of frustration in the room. You know, you look around at, at some of the guys and, you know, the Bertuzzi and the way his season's gone and... Some of the guys on the back end and stuff. And and Brody's kind of the only guy that stands out as as kind of maybe being in a frustrated spot right now. He's been better lately, though. Yeah, no, I mean, a yeah. couple of games. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. The team's playing better in front of them. It's just a lot of positivity on the team, like with Austin and the way everyone's clicking. And, like, we don't even have Mitch in the lineup. Nylander hasn't exactly been explosive. Like, it's just that it's not even close to their ceiling. And it's... And they've got a lot of good things going on right now, hence why I'm excited for these playoffs. But Sammy has been just solid, man. He's not sliding around in his crease. He's not scrambling. He's not trying. Like, like when he's, whenever he's scrambling or trying to get over into a different position, it's because they've made some wild backdoor play and he gets there and like makes the save. And it's like, fuck, man, he's everywhere. And he looks solid and he looks poised. Shutout's obviously huge. And again, like the story, and you talked about the Bill Masterton trophy, like usually that's, you know, a massive injury or a guy that makes a big comeback or guy gets diagnosed with some form of disease or something and, and, you know, rehabilitates himself and gets back into it and has a come out breakthrough season again, something like that. But with Sammy, it's just like, I don't even know if you can put a label on it, what was going on with him at the beginning of the season, but I think a lot of it was mental and, you know, coming out of the coming out of the season of the off season, he just didn't have it. And he's just had a horrendous, like we were like, he's done as a Leafs goaltender, like very, very close, a lot of potential for him just to be buried and then be forgotten about and, you know, put on the back burner. You're done with us. You don't have it. And he was right there hanging by a thread left the NHL to go down on paper, but where he went, I don't know if he went to the Joshua tree and did some mushrooms <laughs> or something happened. He came back. He was a different human being and he's only gotten better over and over again. And that, that shut out and that performance there in Buffalo was kind of, you know, the proof of that he's just reinvented his whole season. And I think, you know, you're starting to 
if things go really well for them in the playoffs, you could argue that he is a candidate for that trophy just from coming back from whatever the hell dark place he was in. Yeah, I wasn't kidding when I brought that up a couple of weeks ago. Like, I, I think when you talk about mental health, it's no joke, that's for sure. And I just think of where this guy was in late December to where he is now is like night and day. And just the way he's playing, the confidence, like even watching that game, I thought Buffalo was probably the better team. But at times, as the better teams in this league, you need saves like that, where it's like you just got that feel early on in that game against Buffalo. Samsonov wasn't getting beaten. Like Dylan Cousins was so frustrated. Tate Thompson was so frustrated. Alex Tuck was so frustrated. Darlene, like the list goes on and on with Sabres players. And you could see the reaction via cam where it's like, damn, this guy's on one right now. And it reminded me of like Aiden Hill last year. It reminded me of like Patrick Waugh back in the day. Marty Berdur, where it's like, you are not beating this guy. And again, brings that feeling where it's like maybe in the playoffs, you know, for the first time, maybe since the Cujo era, the Leafs get a hot run in the playoffs from their goalie. Like, I, I think that would put a team like the Leafs over the top if they got a performance from one of their guys where it's like on a nightly basis. It was like Bobrovsky last year. I know they fall short against Vegas, but like every game, it was like two goals, one goal, two goals, one goal. Like, that sets you up for success, especially when you're a team like Toronto. I know they struggle to score in the playoffs, but I think that gives you confidence at the very least to know, hey, we can worry just about offense here. Yeah, and the teams that win have that, right? I mean, no team is just dominant for 60 minutes. Even the even the great teams that have, you know, the the Blackhawks dynasty, you know, as, as close as you can get to a modern day dynasty, like no, no one's perfect where you just don't give up that that lane or that back door, or that odd man rush. Like this is it's just going to happen and a huge difference and a huge layer of that of a team that's a winning team is, is the goaltender and he can save you out of those spots and bail you out and, and make your mistakes not be that impactful to the game because he can bail you out. He's, you, you have one of those layers back there and then you layer that with some defensemen layer that with some, some grit and some, you know, bottom six forwards and then layer that with some, some of the offense and the, you know, the, the super talent that we have up front. I mean, if you just, if you kind of get all those layers, man, it's just you're going to create frustration on the other end. They're not going to be able to penetrate. And, you know, you could get the momentum as 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 the opponent against the Leafs in the beginning of the second period and have, you know, a good mindset, you know, reframe in, in the intermission. You come out in the second period and you're fucking peppering them and they have some breakdowns and the team wasn't ready for it. Two big saves by Samsonov at get the puck back into the, you know, the top six's hands and they score and the, the team's like, what the hell? Like it's, it creates frustration and to have a guy back there, you can rely on where your mistakes won't be, you know, magnified as much. It's just such a huge piece of the puzzle. And to have a guy back there that they can rely on, it just seems like there's not a lot of, it just seems like the whole, that all those layers that I'm talking about, there's not a, a whole ton of worry. There's not a big gaping hole like there has been in the past. And again, you got to prove it in the playoffs. And I mean, I know in the past they've had trouble scoring goals in the playoffs, but to me, that those were other teams those were different teams those were different years different everything so i there's no reason to expect that to happen this year it's wait and see and i don't expect it to happen this year i think they'll be able to score at a clip that they have been consistently throughout the the regular season and with a goaltender back there just a lot of reasons to be optimistic this year but the thing i do like on the other side is like no one's building them up no one's just going crazy building the statues planning the parade as everyone likes to say no one's doing that we're we're just cautiously optimistic and, you know, just contently confident right now. Like teams looking really good. Teams looking really good. Playoffs are difficult. Playoffs are different, but teams looking good. And it just seems like a, just a solid positive, you know, vibe around this team right now. And I just want to get the goddamn playoffs going. Cause it's, it's, it's time. Oh, it's dragging. It's the dog days of the regular season, which we're in right now. It's still 20 days to go until the Stanley cup playoffs. If you can believe it. it, it it's also amazing when you get good goaltending, what that does for your PK. Um, the Maple Leafs, a rare outing where they go for six for six. And, and that's a yeah. story, too. You take six penalties. That's not going to help. It was a tough start for Connor Dewar. He took four four penalty minutes in the first period. That's going to happen. You need to weather the storm. I know they're missing Marner. I know they're missing Kelly Yarncroke and Edmondson and Riley. And the numbers won't look great, but they got to find a way to get the special teams cooking at the right time. Even the power play has looked dismal. I still am not concerned as much about the power play. It's more about the PK, but... I think that's the positive note I'll grab from the final nine regular season games is finding a way to get the special teams feeling right, at least, you know? Yeah, it was nice to see the kill do that. I mean, the PK is just like the 
the power play in a sense that when you get some momentum going and get some confidence and you find, you know, a group of guys that just all get it together, you don't feel like a bunch of individuals out there trying to do your job. You feel like a unit that all like you look around and like, we're all on the same page here. And when you get a six for six night like that, it's obviously happening for you. And it's nice to find that stuff because it's just as important to, to kill the penalties as, as it is to score on the power play. And, you know, it's, it's nice to have some, some confidence back there on the PK. And, you know, if you get your PP going, it's, it's odd for a group that has the star power that this one does, that the PP isn't your shining star, but you know, I think that'll be something they'll be working towards getting some momentum going on in the, uh, in the next 20 days here and, and try to find some confidence on that end of the ice too, before you, you head into the playoff. So JT scores his 24th. Nick Robertson is 11th. I wanted to bring up to a game. We didn't have a show on Friday, but uh, suddenly Tyler Bertuzzi has got 12 goals in the last 20 games. Like, where did that come from? I really, really like the look of that top line. Very curious if Mitch Marner does come back this week at some point in time, what they do. I would not stray from that top line. Just love the chemistry, love the passion, the enthusiasm. They're playing with uh, Domi, Matthews, and, and Bertuzzi, a trio right now. But as we sort of uh, foreshadowed, um, can you call it a powwow? Like the, 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 the last couple moments of that game, I just wanted like a, a breakdown from you, Rosie, what I watched. <clears throat> well, like I, to start it off, like I saw Brody get hit and like both guys are trying to bury him. Right. Like pure frustration. We're, we're, we're getting shut out. This barn is absolutely rocking us out of the building with their fans, pure frustration. They go to bury Brody, two guys, one guy's like, and then like all the guys are there and it's geo that has to go on first. So I, I just tweeted, how come our 40 year old guy who's just coming back from a concussion is the first guy in there, right? It just, it doesn't make sense. That's not the guy who should be leading the charge with that type of play. But these guys aren't as old school as geo and, they don't play that style that Gio, you know, grew up with. And he's got to be the first guy in there. So a tiny bit of frustration that he was the first guy in there. And then this kind of half-hearted melee goes on. It's just, it's like everyone was, it wouldn't settle down because no one quite got the what they wanted out of it. But it's like, well, okay, it's the end of the game. The game's decided. Everyone gets kicked out anyways. It's just a whole bunch of hugging and like kind of half fighting. Like your gloves are on. There's, you're kind of pushing and face washing and just hugging onto each other. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like a half-hearted millennial or Gen Z style brawl, I guess, but all good. I, I tweeted that out. It was kind of my only tweet of the night. I was just focused on watching hockey and I kind of tweeted. It wasn't even supposed to be that like other people agreed to, but it, some people were like, man, you just can't make some people happy. And I don't want to be that negative guy. I wasn't being, and it, it was kind of a bad time to tweet that after all the positivity and unbelievable things that happened during that game. It, I understand why I could take some heat for doing that. I do not want to mean to come off, but it was just one thing that stood out. Like the other guys on the ice look around and go, shit, why did Gio have to start with that? Like, why did dad have to come in? He's 40. His head's been banged around. He's just coming back. Like maybe I should have been the first guy to kind of initiate that. And then everything after was just kind of half-hearted. To me, it's like either get off the ice and get your boys and get gone or fucking do something. It was kind of really half-hearted and everyone's got their gloves on. I was like, what are we doing here, guys? It was uh, it was confusing, I won't lie, because it got to that awkward stage where it was like 45 seconds of that, where it's like, am I watching Timbits hockey? Am I watching um, high school hockey where you're not allowed to fight? You get suspended from school if that happens because yeah, that's you're awesome. waiting for like one guy to drop the gloves because I think if one... One guy drops the gloves, like all hell ensues, but like nobody really wanted to go. Like, I don't know if you caught this too. And I, I don't, this is me not chirping Matthew Nyes, but Dylan Cousins wanted some of Matthew Nyes at the end. He was tapping him, he was tapping him. And I'm not taking, I wouldn't take that fight either. There's no point. You won the game. You got the last laugh. You, you buried them in their own building. But like, you didn't get that feel where anybody on Toronto actually wanted to go. Like there was an infamous video of Austin Matthews collecting um, the gloves and the sticks, uh, which is very on brand for this core four. But again, I don't want to see Matthews fight. I want to see him win in the playoffs. So whatever. That's why they pick up these Bertuzzi's and maybe just more indicative of Mark Giordano, the type of guy, the type of leader he is at 40 to step in the way he did after, you know, uh, a, a hit from behind on Deline. And I thought it was funny. The cherry on top, everybody on the ice got 10, including Austin Matthews. And Again, not ragging on Matthews, but you saw him talking to the official. 
could only wonder, hey, I have 60 goals. Why are you taking me out of the game? There's an empty net. That's that's where my head goes. I don't know about yours. I was thinking too. No, that's what it that's what it looked like. It looked like college <laughs> hockey where like the the pot's boiling over, but no one's allowed, you know, you don't want to get suspended. Or <laughs> it's like yeah. it's a national league, guys. If you guys want to do it, and I don't know if to me, like I'm j- I was just waiting for someone to get the stick up high and give a cross check across the teeth kind of thing while you're because you know in my era or whatever when you're when you're doing the old push and shove and it's boiling over yeah 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 the gloves just come off and you have a fight and that's it but when that one when no one's really willing but everyone's getting pissed and it's getting physical (laughs) and everyone's getting angry and but no one does drop their gloves like the only thing left to do is someone's going to eat the shaft of a stick right on there and then all of a sudden it's like is someone saw that two game suspension here or whatever but yeah nice guy and they were whacking each other and what's that it would be six games. Morgan Riley did ah, to, your, to your boy Ridley uh, Gregg. But, uh, but yeah, no, I just wanted yeah, it was what it was. It's not this team, whatever. Geo started it and no one else really quite knew what to do. It was kind of half hearted. It was what it was. But yeah, I didn't, I shouldn't have tweeted that that on that night because there's too much positive for that to be kind of a tweet, but uh, got a little traction, I guess. Understandably, it was a big night for a lot of different reasons. I actually had a tweet lined up. Someone dropped the fucking gloves, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't do this because I'm going to get blowback. But I, I, you're not the only one that thought the way I did when I'm like, is somebody going to fight? Then it got awkward where it's like, it was this hugging match. And then I saw various accounts on Twitter saying line brawl, everybody ejected. I'm like, man, that is burying the lead big time because what I watch and trans, I don't know. It just seemed like a bunch of angry guys and they knew where the game's at and they had to do something, but they they want to do something. But I, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that the Maple Leafs full value in that victory Good on Austin Matthews. You referenced it. The ninth player in NHL history with multiple 60-goal seasons. Samsonov was great. The crowd is fantastic. Love where this team's at right now and getting set for the Florida Panthers in this game tonight. This segment is brought to you by Charm Diamond Centers. Get custom ring building delivered in less than four weeks with the Charm Masterpiece Program and an unbeatable pricing policy. For more information, go to CharmDiamondCenters.com. Which leads us to the Mitch Marner segment, which is another thing you tweeted about over the weekend. So he was placed on LTIR retroactive to March 7th, spoke to the media on Friday for the first time about the injury. Um, did you view it as a bit of a pity party? Cause like he took aim at the media. He's like, it was bizarre to me. Yeah. I mean, if that would make sense to me, I mean, if the media can gang up on, you know, a guy in Toronto and you can take, you know, a lot of blows from a lot of different angles. There's a ton of weight behind the media in that city. And I get when a guy gets his back up and says, you know what, screw you. I've heard all the shit you guys say and screw you. We don't listen to you and blah, blah, blah. But he does listen though. He does listen though. I know it's like, oh, we don't listen to what you say, but I hate what you said. I know it's like, well, you know, obviously you can't really hide from it. But with Mitch, I'm just like, I don't really get it. I mean, we were trying to figure out where he hurt himself. It was in that Boston game. There was that one play where, clear as day wide open net and he tried to you know dish it and who the hell is anyone to say you know what Mitch should have done of course he knows he should have probably buried that open net but he had a play in his mind and his vision was looking at something it's 10 times better than the vision I ever had 10 times better than every single person that's watching or criticizing that play and whatever it is what it is he made a bit of a mistake in a game where that like nothing was going right for the Leafs then it might have been that play that he hurt himself so people were you know, looking at that play anyway. And then like, was it, was it right here that he hurt his ankle? That's kind of the only thing. And then after that, you know, after he goes out and he's injured, people were just talking about, you know, Mitch Marner's still out and we could really use them and who's going to step up for, you know, and take Mitch's role. It's kind of the only thing I heard said about regarding Mitch Marner. And then he's like, I watch every game and I know what you guys are saying about me. It's like, I don't understand what you're saying. I just, it's an odd time to do that. And you know, Mitch can kind of come off whiny sometimes or immature sometimes. Fine, whatever. Um, I'm not, a, you know, a hater of Mitch. I've I've had my issues with his play, you know, <laughs> last not. year. Not not so much this year. I think he's cleaned up some of the some of the circusy stuff, and I I don't have any problems. So I was just like, I was like, well, who's he mad at, and why did he choose this time? I think I think across the board, everyone was wondering what specifically is he talking about that the media, which media has said about him since his injury i didn't understand it i don't think anyone did but not trying to uh make him out of a molehill it's it's whatever yeah the direct quote um we put it on the screen for those you just listening in podcast form 
I've been watching every game. You guys have been talking about it every single game. I think you guys can say whatever you want. It's behind me now. Stuff happened, and you just go on from it. Uh, I think, quite honestly, he was probably embarrassed the way he got hurt because he had the empty net. <laughs> he went around the net, and that's where he suffered the uh, high ankle sprain. I just thought like it was it was a weird moment for like a passive aggressive nature where it became about Mitch Marner and less about the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I think that's why people were like, like what? Like it was just really random to me. And you know what, from his perspective, you try to stay away from that stuff. You try and I mean, the last thing you're going to do is go into, you know, the comment section on some show like ours and start reading, you know what I mean? Not, but say something comes across his phone or a buddy sends some kind of a clip where some guy's like, you know, one comment, one take from one this guy. This guy said you can't like, lift the Stanley Cup, Mitch. You think he got <laughs> that clip? I doubt it, but whatever it is, <laughs> moving on. He, he maybe you see one thing and you're in a grumpy mood and you, I mean there's nothing more frustrating than being injured you know the guy's trying to get to 100 points for the first time that's not going to happen now with this bloody injury high ankle sprains they they're infamously you know finicky and and frustrating he hears one thing and then he gets a bunch of mics in his face I could see him saying you know what I don't give a shit what's being said about I get it but also like I don't know if you were listening like actually no one was chirping you or your injury i don't really know a little bit of frustration there but again tough spot for a guy to be in when you're trying to stay away from it I, it's hard to know actually what's going on maybe he just got one or two clips of something i don't even know what where he got his back up against it but i don't know i think you just got to learn you're not gonna you're not gonna win against the big machine that's the media you're i don't know what the what, what the answer is for a guy like Mitch in Toronto, I think like, you know, Austin, for example, handles it very well. He doesn't push back at all. He's never like, I just don't think you're going to win by getting your back up against the media. They're just going to kind of turn on you. All the fans will be easy to pick you apart. Just do what Austin does. He's just, he's pretty chill and yeah. doing his best. If it's going good, if it's going bad, he's kind of pretty even keel. But yeah, I don't know what that was about, Mitch. He probably looked at it after saying, eh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Who knows? Who cares? Look, it, it's fine and dandy. But having said that, I, do, I don't negotiate through the media this summer. We, we A storm is coming this summer. He's going to talk contract extension. And hopefully it doesn't go the way it did last time, where every day it was something new. Then he's threatening to go to Columbus to sign an offer sheet. Like, don't give me that bullshit and then do this shit. That's all I'm saying, right? There's got to be transparency on both sides. And I... I just thought it was really, really weird. It just came off really, really bitchy and like passive aggressive where it's like, this is the most important time for your career and your team. And it's about you somehow. Like, I, I don't know what broadcasts or what he's listening to where he's like, oh my God, they're, they continue to talk about me. It was mentioned a couple of times. And truthfully, I, I think he was a bit embarrassed the way he got injured. I mean, it is what it is. He's so important to this team. I just, I thought the reaction was a bit weird, but anyways. Yeah, let's move I know. On. What a, yeah, I get it. I, and I just, I just don't think that, I think if you're smart in that market, you want to keep the media on your side. Um, you're going to have to have a thick skin and let some stuff, you know, watershed off a duck's back and not really get worked up about it and, and, and you know, just let stuff come and go. And if you get your back up, man, it's, it's only going to make it more difficult for you. And, you know, it's, it's tough when you're in there, there's PR people, but they're not saying, Hey, Mitch, this is what you got to say. This is what you got to do. <laughs> they're kind of passively. Hey, Mitch, do you mind doing an interview right now? And then if it gets going too long, they're like, okay, hey, he's done now. And they pull him out. It's kind of it. They're not sitting there like grooming him on how to, you know, unless he has his own PR person, which I'm sure he doesn't, but you know, there's a way to go about being in the spotlight in Toronto and a way not to. And I think that getting your back up and getting bitchy at them when really they weren't even doing anything is probably the wrong way to go about it. So I wouldn't think there'd be too many more of those. I, I, I'm i sure he felt a bit of the blowback. We'll see. Yeah. That first uh, Marner wants more money than Nylander story is going to hit like crack this summer. Okay. Uh, that negotiation, that conversation for another day. It's It's been really weird on the injury front. So it sounds like Mar Marner's getting closer, which is the positive news out of all this. But then like they throw in like burying the story but like timothy lilligren's now week to week like they don't envision it being for the s yes, the, the rest excuse me of the regular season but that he's week to week now suddenly joel edmondson's week to week morgan mm -hmm. Raleigh was in the morning skate this morning doesn't look like he'll play though but like it's getting to that point in the year where it's like hey what's seriously going on with these guys I know the Edmondson one stands out to me, man, as a piece of the puzzle that could really make a difference in the playoffs. The way he played against Edmonton that that uh, last game he was standing out for. And it was like, 
what do you mean week to week? And like, it's like, fuck, what's going on with these guys? There's a lot of guys with all this. And I don't know if that's just kind of they're saying, hey, don't expect these guys. We are not taking any chances. If this was November, they'd probably be a little closer to day to day. But I don't know. I just that to me, that Edmondson one stands out. I, I just I think that he could be a piece of this puzzle on the back end in a playoff series. That's that's the difference. You know, a team can just run over this back end sometimes, expose them strip their confidence of him. You have a guy like Edmondson playing where he was against playing the way he was against Edmonton that night. It's just like, that is a big F you in a series of good luck. We got a big bag <laughs> of bricks here and it's no one's dicking around in our end. And that's, you know, that's contagious. Other guys play bigger. It, it can funnel through the whole team and it's playoff style of things. You're not going to have, you know, Boston or, or Florida come in and start pushing you around like Tampa tried to do last year. It wasn't successful, but you know, a guy like him is huge. And I'm like, week to week, he better not be. I hope this is more of a load management thing. And they're just making sure everyone's 100%. And it's not like we might be out of one of these guys here come drop of the puck uh, in the postseason. Yeah, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Again, still 20 days away from the Stanley Cup playoffs. But at the very least, I want to see these guys like Yarn Croak and Lilligren and Edmondson play a couple games down the stretch just so they're not cold for game one of the playoffs against whoever that opponent may be. The only thing sweeter than the, the taste of victory is starting your day off with a new Cinnabon pull-apart from Wendy's. That said, there's no reason you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Faceoff Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon pull-apart and a small coffee would be a great choice. Sign up for Daily Faceoff today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. A short time ago, Sheldon Keefe addressing the media ahead of tonight's game against the Florida Panthers. No lineup changes. So Ilya Samsonov gets the call, and it's the same Leafs team that beat Buffalo on Saturday against the Florida Panthers here. Yeah, nice. I don't uh, – I mean, I know ideally what I'm looking for. Like, I just – it's kind of a – this time of year, it's like how – like those games against Tampa at the end of the year when they know they're going to be their opponent. Like, how do we approach these? Do we rest some guys' load management? Do we – put in our number one like do you set yourself up or do you show all your cards and, and show up with your chest puffed out ready to you know send a message and I would love for them to do that the rest of the year but I know there's some load management things that come into play these days and you know you don't want to risk this or that so I, I get it but I do think it's a bit of a potential for a statement game to say you know, these big bad Panthers, you guys are always the favorites and you guys are this big powerhouse and we're always, you know, we have this huge market that's always been disappointed and there's always this, you know, negativity around there or potential for disappointment. Like, come out and just fucking smack these guys around by playing some of your best hockey. You've been playing really good hockey lately and kind of send them, like, pack your shit, head back and say, yeah, how do you like that? Like, this is who we yeah. are this year and kind of open everybody's eyes. See if it's one of those games. There's a potential for it to be that way or, like, how serious do you take this or the the standings it's just a weird time of year again i just want it to be yeah. black and white like this is a huge game of like you got to win this one send a message it's a it's one that everyone wants bring your best all that kind of thing so it's a bit of a measuring stick game but with them banged up and doing the load and eh, we'll see we'll see how it pans out but i'm, I'm interested to watch how this one goes leave a mark uh bottom line win or loss i i won't be any feel differently I won't feel any differently, I should say, coming up on Tuesday. Again, it's a meaningless game, I'll be honest. Again, outside of positioning, the Leafs trying to solidify a playoff spot, who they're going to play in the first round. It's all up in the air, but I, I just would say leave a mark. Uh, I, I'm interested to see Ryan Reeves uh, in this game. Um, I want to see some pushback. I want to see some scrums. Nothing stupid, nothing crazy. I'm not really implying that but I, I want them to show Florida like we're different this year and we're going to do this right if we play you watch the fuck out and I want to yep. instill some fear like I just leave a mark I mean you'd be the best to describe that right you can do that in many ways yeah just play tough team tough like carry yourself with confidence your body language should be big any little messing around with take your pick one of their guys over there messing around with Samsonov all five guys together just grab that not a fucking chance buddy like be confident be strong be tough be mean don't be dumb like don't take penalties you don't have to fight anybody just yeah. play team tough and you know i think this team has had its confidence shaken has been a little bit weak at times teams know that you can get to them by playing tough in the past and i think this team under tree living looks a lot different and I don't think you can get away with that. And I want them to show that. Come out, just 
just pepper, just speed, shots, offensive zone, finish all your hits, any bit of jam, F you, grab those guys by the scruffs of their jersey and get them the hell out of there. Like, no, no, not in this house. Like, we are big, we are mean, we are confident, we are a really good hockey team. Look the fuck out this year. Open their eyes over there a little bit. And I just hope they lead with that kind of a mentality every single game until the playoffs, regardless of what's going on with the lineup and load management and everything. Make that part of your identity, man, because it is... We just talk about all the time. It's playoffs. It is the way it is in the playoffs. If you want to have success, you have to have a little bit of that. You can't be a little pussy prancy team out there and have any sort of success. You'll get run out of the building. So they, they've altered the DNA of their team a little bit. And I just want them to kind of lead with that confidence and, and have that team confidence and toughness is, is big for me. And for the fringe guys like Nick Robertson, Connor Timmins, um, I think you have to look at every game the same where it's like this is a trial run. Uh, again, if you're Nick Robertson, you show, hey, I can stick it against Florida. I could score some goals. I mean, moments like this go a long way, especially when you're you're a team like the Leafs, that depth scoring has really, really let you down in the Stanley Cup playoffs. If you can set yourself apart from others this time of year, I think that it doesn't go unnoticed. Like At the very least, you're the first guy to come in that lineup when you need to make adjustments or lineup changes. So I think that specifically guys like Reeves, you know, Timmons, Nick Robertson, like those type of players, Bob McMahon, Connor Dewar. I think this is a bigger game um, than guys like who are shoe to be on the roster for game one of the playoffs and our mainstays on the roster. I, I think there's significance again, maybe we're gasping at straws. Like there's only nine games remaining. And in the grand scheme of things, I mean, how much does this game really, really matter? But, I think there's significance for a couple guys on that roster right now. Yeah, those would be the good guys to watch, you know, on a game like this where they want to make an impact. Like if Yarn Crow comes back, where does he fit in the lineup? Who's he pushing yep. out? Who's he playing with? You know, there's those decisions that will have to be made that, you know, it's just like training camp when you're trying to make a team. Now you're trying to make the roster going into the playoffs you know, make it difficult on the brass and on Sheldon Keefe, make it hard on them. Don't make it an easy decision. If, if Nick Robertson goes out there and he's kind of just waiting for his spots and he's kind of gliding around trying to find the soft spots and then, and then changes it and then gets kind of frustrated. Like I'm not getting the plays aren't happening. It's like, it's you're easy to yank out of the lineup, man. Go be a maniac out there. Move your goddamn feet so hard. Get that puck, take it to the net, stop, give a guy a shot, finish that hit back, check like a maniac. Make them go, holy fuck, man. This, he's making it hard for us to pull him out. Like he's doing everything we could ever ask. You know, you chip in a little bit of, you know, some points here and there and do your job on that side. Well, holy shit. All of a sudden it's like, man, this guy's doing everything we want. Like make it hard on them. And, and those are the type of guys that I'll be watching tonight to say, how much do they want to be in the lineup? How much are they trying to be a factor? And, uh, you know, they can make a difference in this. And you're looking at the standings like producer Nick says, do you want to catch Florida right now? We were talking about, you know, last week, falling into a, a wild card spot could that be you know a different look for these guys that maybe they'd welcome or do you want to pass them and be second it's it's kind of all over the place i feel like it's starting to firm up it's going to be yeah. most likely florida or or a good possibility of boston but do you want them to get more points and it's kind of all over the place so i don't really yeah. i can't look at the standings right now and decide what i want i just want our own team to do the right things Yep, well said. Uh, the Leafs six points back of Florida with one game in hand for second in the Atlantic Division. So potentially maybe home ice advantage in that first round matchup if it is the Florida Panthers, if it is maybe even a Boston. But again, they'd, they'd have to go on a significant heater and the teams ahead of them would have to lose some games. And obviously it helps when you're playing a team like Florida who you're trying to catch in the standings. The Botano wrap-up is presented by Botano.ca. Go ahead. What are you maybe say? they could ask to play their home games in Buffalo. Just an idea. Or I love that. I it probably be um, less expensive too, which I'm down for come the Stanley Cup playoffs. Good luck trying to get playoff tickets for the Leafs. But as mentioned, uh, Batano, the official partner of Copa America 2024, taking the beautiful game to new heights in the Americas, joined Batano on their journey of passion, unity, and unforgettable football moments. I'll be honest, I like to stay away from betting on the NHL, as you just mentioned, the last couple of days, weeks of the season, because it's so unpredictable. Even last week, Philadelphia gets hammered by. Chicago out of all teams but I think when you look at this least game specifically I want to see a low scoring tight checking type game so maybe you look at the under tonight and the way Samson has played the way Bobrovsky's played all season long maybe that's where I'm looking yeah it's not a bad idea if you if you look around the league at some guys that are approaching milestones or looking for the lead in certain categories you could maybe you know sprinkle onto those guys they'll be going extra hard you know they won't be taking nights off type thing um that 
that point leading race right now is super, yeah. super tight. What McDavid's done to catch up and, and be in the mix there. So those are some betting options, but the under on tonight's game, um, I could see that being, everyone could be a little bit tighter and feeling each other out. Goaltenders could be solid. Um, if it's at a six and a half, maybe the under is the play. Uh, it's interesting, but yeah, a tough time of year to be betting on, on things. Cause it's yeah. so much is up in the air. Nylander, anytime goal too. I think he needs one more for a career high coming off last season. So I would look there as well. So Rosie, we'll leave it at that. Uh, you're back on Wednesday, Anthony Stewart in tomorrow to break down this one. And, uh, on Wednesday coming up will be another big time divisional matchup against Tampa, right? Yeah, there's going to be a few of those coming down the stretch here. And, uh, you know, it looked a little tighter there last week at what those games could mean, those four-point games where, you know, there could be some some pretty substantial change in the lineups that that have consequences. But uh, we'll see where they're at come those. But, yeah, some, some in-division rivalry games coming down the barrel here, which makes this time of year a little bit more exciting and a reason to kind of tune in a little extra. No jokes on this show. Hopefully no jokes on the ice at Scotiabank Arena as the Maple Leafs get set to host the Florida Panthers. Thank you to producer Vic. Thank you to the chat. You guys are outstanding at the Leafs Nation 401. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave some money to take. Wherever you find your podcast, make sure to hit us up with a five-star review and a quick comment how you like the podcast. We really, really appreciate that. And again, for Jay Rosil, I'm Nick Alberga, Anthony Stewart in the mix on Tuesday. Talk then. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, we got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.